uh, this recording has started, so just everybody knows this is going to be recorded. So really quick, I want to show you guys kind of what PNG will look like and how we get to um, kind of to, to, to track our login for this. So this is what it sh your PNG should look like um, on this, on your end, even in the app. It should roughly look like this. So <clears throat> you're going to come in here. You're going to go to view large group drop in sessions. Oh, and you'll need to join a course, the basic 5105. This is a little bit off right now um, because Penji kind of messed up with stuff. So you might need to be in this course specifically, the biochemistry one, basic 5105, zero one, this one in order for it to show up. Um, they're getting that all fixed, so for today, don't worry too much. But yeah, so you should see right here, Biochemistry 1 online, scheduled hours. This is like the 8 to 9, so that, all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is, looks like there's another in-person one, 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Wednesday in the CST. Um, if you are in person, you can go to that one. So <clears throat> we'll come to here, 8 to 9, and you'll click Check In Now. And it'll say you're checked in. So that is what it's going to look like. So just repeat the view large group drop in sessions, select the course, and it'll pop up. And then you can check in to um, the tutoring session on here. The reason why we do Penji and all this sort of stuff is actually to keep track of how many people are attending the sessions, as well as it can really help you out if let's say your grade is right on the cusp of passing failing. Um, <clears throat> if you have a clear record that you have been coming to tutoring and doing all of this extra effort, that's you're much more likely to be able to petition your grade and be able to show like, hey, I did put forth the effort, I did put forth all these things and possibly persuade the teacher or somebody to give you a little bit of an extra chance just to bump that grade over. Um, as well, if you do um, happen to fail a course, which is completely normal, a large percentage of the population of the student body does um, fail it, fail a course at some point. Yeah, as Kristen said, you need to be attending tutoring and have a record of that. So that if we keep a record here. Um, either if you're not able to get Penji to work, then just make sure that you send whoever the tutor is, make sure you send them a message, leave some kind of paper trail showing that in fact you were there you were present i would probably write something like um, your name uh, attended a session with the tutor on this day from this time to this time and i would cc like send a message to them and cc also whoever um your like, academic advisor is just and like note, Penji was not able to work, so this is why I, I went ahead and, and did this. So just to, you know, the more you can document stuff and have a paper trail, the better off you're going to be. On that note, let's go ahead and, and kind of jump in. First off, I kind of want to get a sense how how is everybody feeling so far? First week under your belts, how how are things going? Talk to me. Overwhelmed. Yeah, I definitely feel better this week than I do did last week. I'd say. Good. Yeah, I'm finding myself putting off of like this class and cells and tissues. But other than that, not too bad. Yeah, same. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> at this point, it's very, very normal to be completely honest that's the kind of feeling you're gonna have pretty much every single try um from here on out typically you'll you'll get adjust quicker each time but typically the first week or two it's just a lot of of change a lot of new a lot of different and it's you're kind of going to get that feeling of like what the heck is going on so first thing that i wanted to start out talking about um, not directly biochem related, just school related 
let me pull up. I think it's this one. So everybody has a different way of managing kind of their schedule and how they go about keeping track of everything. This right here, this is personally how I did it. And this is actually how I continue to do it. I can actually pull up. Let me show you. I should if I go through this, you can see there's my try eight schedule. I'll have try six schedule. I have every single try in here. This is my current try nine. This is all my my statistics and stuff for myself. Again, first of all, you don't have to do all of this. This is a lot. Just this is the one of the ways that I found was easiest for me. If you want to have a group of people that put together, it doesn't put this, this together, that's fine. So this is still how I keep track of all of my stuff. Where, sorry, give me one sec. My, my son's 11 months old and he's figured out that he can walk, which comes with a lot of trips and bumps and bruises. So <laughs> if you hear him screaming, that's probably why. Uh, but yeah, so I have, admit, there we go. So I have every single class and I break it up into the videos I need to watch, the PowerPoints, different assessments, reviews. So for example, biochemistry one, what I would typically do on week one of the course, you'll see, uh, this was me kind of figuring it out. Let's go to, yeah, this week. So here you can see all of my Monday, the Monday live lecture, amino acids, amino acids is part two. Also, I put the time, I'll typically set it up. So I put the time that's here. Roughly how much each of these things is going to take me. I'll put like links and stuff here. I don't do this as much because I found that it's not as effective. But so I break it all down by time, exactly how much each video is going to take me, roughly how much after a couple of weeks, you'll figure out how long each of the different quizzes and stuff are going to take you. Um, readings, I'll be completely honest, readings for me as a student, those I put in the very last category of if I have enough time, which I very rarely had enough time, I would do the readings. Um, Again, just depending on figure out how you learn. If you learn better by reading a book compared to watching the lecture videos, do what works best for you. But this allowed me to kind of see exactly how many hours of material I had each week. And <laughs> the total hours that I had each week and what um, I needed to do. And then I could sort it by day. Let me find, and that, this took me a while to kind of to like do and is um, and kind of fully prep and kind of figure out the best like way to do it, but it eventually turned into something like this: videos, PowerPoints, assessments, review studies. So I would put each video how much is there, and actually I would label over here a day of the week that I would plan on doing that Saturday, Sunday, whatever day of the week I would want it done. So that way I could kind of then I could look and see I have fa I found that four to five hours give or take of lecture material and slash extras is about what I can accomplish in a day. Um, if I'm dedicating that full day to to school, maybe a little sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. So that is the way that I sort of sorted through all of my material and got um, and got through everything. Um, it's kind of a lot. Does seeing that hopefully seeing that kind of helps people a little bit realize that there are ideas out there for manage. Find what works for you. I am actually going to post the link to this. I just posted it into the chat here. Feel free to come onto this to make a copy. If you right click and do copy to a new spreadsheet, you can make your own. And it should allow yeah, anyone with the link is a viewer, so you should be able to. So you should be able to um, make your own copy and do with that. If this is something that works for you, play with it again, decide what works best for you. Organization is super key in this program. Staying on top 
of the material as well as not missing deadlines is huge. You'll find where some professors in undergrad or in previous schooling were a little bit lenient with deadlines. Parker, teachers at Parker are not lenient at all. If you miss a deadline, even by 30 seconds, you're out of luck. They will not accept it. This is a graduate level program. You guys are training and studying to become doctors. Um, the utmost professionalism is expected and having everything in on time and by the deadline is, is key to all of that. There's a lot of information. Any questions, concerns, anything else that that brings up that you'd like to ask me at this time? I don't see the chat anywhere. Where are you on your on, are you on your laptop? Yes. The very top of the meeting. This should be the second one or the first icon. You should see ch a chat button. OK. I don't, but I'll find it. <laughs> um, yeah, let's I don't share the screen. This is what roughly what you guys should see. If you don't see this, um, I might if I stop sharing. Uh, let me see. I'll do this. This is the kind of screen roughly. Let me exit the spotlight if that helps. So this is the screen roughly that you should see up at the top. You should she should see a chat icon, all of this kind of stuff up here at the top. If you're on your laptop or your computer. And this is the it, chat button right there. It doesn't show the chat, but it shows pop out or take control of the presentation instead. Up there. OK. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Uh, Christine, it looks like you can access the chat. Are you? Yes, I am in the chat. OK, I'm going to go ahead. I will post this link into your guys' group me. Um, let me, yeah, leave that. So that way you have it there. One thing I can share as they try to technically try one, communicate with your professors. Yes, that's another thing. Um, with the professors, every even if the, even if a professor, even if you feel or think that a professor doesn't want you to succeed, you feel like they're making your life hell. I promise you, they want you to succeed. I promise you. Um, one Dr. of the Sarkar. one of the best things that yeah, doctors, you're gonna feel either you love Dr. Sarkar or you hate Dr. Sarkar. The people that love Dr. Sarkar typically have had a one on one meeting with him and try and be open and receptive. If you've never had a one on one meeting with him and you just have like the live experiences with him, you might end up trying like hating him. But I promise you he's here to help and he wants to help you. And that goes for all the teachers. Um, if you ha are able to always, always, always meet with the professors post exams to see what kind of questions that you missed. Um, any data or information that you can get back from the professor or from your past exams, all that sort of good stuff will be very, very beneficial in the long run of understanding what mistakes you made and how to kind of correct those and what kind of questions you need to work on on answering. Um, taking tests is as much kind of an art as it is a science. Like it's, it's a lot more than just kind of knowing the material. A lot of the time it is more understanding what the question is trying to ask and understanding how the professor is going to ask those questions. Now kind of going into how Dr. Sarkar asks his questions. A vast majority of his questions are going to appear very, very kind of long winded and we'll get into kind of how to go over those questions um, a little bit further down the road. But personally, and Kristen, if you want to chime in here, I felt the best resource for Dr. Sarkar's course were <clears throat> was either was watching his lectures first and then reading the book and piecing up and breaking up the book in order to actually kind of break down and try and understand the material. I absolutely agree with that as going through it the second time. It's a lot 
I wouldn't say easier because it's still hard for me because I'm still struggling with basic stuff. But it is extremely helpful. I think, Cheryl, you met with him today too, right? I did. Yeah. Um, Meet with him from week one if possible. (laughs) I'll share something that Christine um, shared with me. And I think she had posted something on... um, on the group me about mind grasp, I have a really hard time understanding him. And so sometimes I have gotten frustrated during class and I just can't keep up and I end up getting more frustrated. So what I've done is just try to organize my thoughts, move, move the, the whole, you can download the file over into mind grasp and it will tell you verbatim what he said. So, and then go back and do it again. So, um, that, that's been helpful for me. Yeah. So that's another thing. There are a handful of professors who do have accents. Typically the first couple of weeks, uh, probably the first three, four weeks, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to kind of understand what they're saying. Um, the more that you listen to it and like, so it might take some extra energy the first couple of weeks, but if you can, the more that you listen to them talk, and honestly, that's why I preferred like all of their lectures and stuff. I would always watch them after the fact. I never really watched or participated in anything live. That and I was working tries one and two, so schedule got in the way a little bit. I do not recommend working during tries one and two. That is my personal recommendation, but <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of, you can slow things down a little bit and kind of rewind and re-listen and, and honestly, Google, here's my next bit of, tidbit of advice. Google is your best friend. I genuinely believe people who are smart, myself included, they are not very, they're not actually very smart. They're just really, really good at finding the answers quickly. Okay. So knowing <clears throat> how to properly Google and how to and consistently Googling is an amazing benefit. So, for example, let's actually pull up. You, what uh, what have you guys finished all of chapter one and chapter two for biochem or where are you guys sitting right now? One, two, started three. Started three. OK. Try one biochem. One. As I pull this up, I'll talk about this. So for anybody that hasn't seen it, this is my YouTube channel. Here is my biochem whole. Ch- Sorry, one sec. <clears throat> so this is the whole biochem tutoring playlist. And let's see if I can, here we go. Oops, sorry, sorry. So right here we have literally this is all of my videos from previous tutoring as well as specific. I go through the entire book. The entire textbook is here. I read through the entire textbook, pausing, explaining things, jumping back, relating to different concepts. I do a full final exam review. We did a exam one review on here as well that's mm-hmm. over like three hours that's three and a half hours worth of of review so everything is here um <clears throat> we have this first s- session that i did last trimester this was our the general tutoring chem review if you feel like you're struggling with chem it's been a couple of years since you've taken any chemistry this right here goes over all of the review like general review material that you're going to want to see just like set yourself up to kind of jump back into it. it goes through a lot of the basics and then we jump into chapter oh, I was in the wrong order Boop. chapter one chapter two amino acids um, we have an intro to the class intro to all the classes video so give it tips and tricks for all of the classes for try one in each and every single chapter some chapters are beefier than others so i tried to break them up a little bit so everything is is here this is all for you guys to use to help you. Um, 
Again, this is something that I, I started doing a couple of trimesters ago. I'm trying my best to do it with future bio, like biochem two and physiology one, some of the more tougher courses. Um, it does take a lot of time for me to do this. Um, then I hope you guys use this as a resource. It's extremely helpful, especially when it comes to exams. Sweet. Thank you for for vouching. Um, I'm just a horrible test taker. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I put? Oh, it's going to be in books. Um, books. Try one. Uh, biochem. I have biochem. books too. Yeah. It, also, if anybody does have PDF files of all of the quest the book questions, if you're able to, somebody's able to find and share those with me, I would love to do tutoring sessions revolving around those or other videos going through all of those questions. I just have not been able to have access to them um, up to this point. So, like, so there's like the workbook stuff. Let's see, all through that. Okay. <clears throat> I'll send you the questions. I'm getting ready to go through a couple more chapters on the okay. questions and I'll PDF them as I go. Sweet. That would be awesome. So a lot of like the general, the Gen Chem review video, go, we go through a lot of, of this whole first intro chapter one stuff, going through all of this information. Um, the kind of got to, what, like I was talking about a little bit ago, the best thing to do is is Google. One of the best tools that you have are is Googling. So, for example, when you when I started the program out, I genuinely felt like half of the time I was just lost and I had no clue what anybody was talking about. Like I was reading the book or listening to the teachers and I was like, I don't know half of the words of what you're saying. So what I would literally do is so example we get here anything that you do not if that you are unable to explain to somebody else in your own words so for example functional groups if i were to ask any of you what is a functional group what does that mean how many of you feel like you could explain that back to me oh. explain exactly what it is okay so what we're going to want to do is live to go to google say what is a functional group biochem definition so and literally what i would all I will, and i still do this all the time with my textbooks a functional group is a specific group of atoms within a molecule that is responsible for a characteristic of that molecule so i'm going to literally copy and paste that right in there. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to rewrite this. So based on that definition, so functional group is a specific group of atoms that a molecule is responsible for characteristic of that molecule. So it is a group of atoms that make a molecule have the properties that it does put it into my own words like that. Um, with that, I'm going to take a quick pause. I'm just going to my wife's putting my baby to bed and I'm going to go say goodnight to him. I will be right back in just a couple of minutes. I have a question, just um, a general question for anybody. Who, um, what recommendations do y'all have like on tablets? I heard, uh, I saw somebody posting about tablets and pins and whatnot. So like what he's posting there, um, it looks like maybe he was just looking at the PDFs um, that we got in gifts. What, what are y'all using? I'm using my school issued laptop because it comes with a pen and turns into a tablet. You guys will get them within the next 
two to three weeks. Ah, I'm glad I asked. So I don't even buy one. Yeah, I bought a laptop like that. I have a a laptop that turned that folds flat into a tablet, and then I bought a pen to go with it. And then, as far as the actual like making notes on it, I usually fold it into the tablet, and I'll I'm using Good Notes. Um, okay. I I paid for the yearly thing because you get an unlimited amount of like uploads and things. Uh, I think it was like eight bucks. It wasn't okay. it wasn't much at all. And so I've liked Good Notes a lot, and I just fold my laptop flat into the tablet and use my pen and write in there. But gotcha. don't buy your don't buy a separate laptop just to have it. You'll get it with your school issued laptop. Gotcha. All right. Thanks. I'm back. <clears throat> Heard you guys were all talking about kind of how you do notes and stuff. Um, I'll jump into that really quick. Purse, two things. One, handwriting, you will have better long term retention. However, typing does tend to be a lot quicker. So try both, see which one you can can make work. I have horrible handwriting. So for me, I, I prefer to type. Um, so it just kind of depends on what works for you. Try both, see what you like. That's all I'm going to say about that. OK. okay. <clears throat> any any questions? Kind of what I started is, does this make sense what I'm doing here? The kind of the Google and the answer. Yes. OK. Any questions up to this point or comments or curiosities? Specifically for Sarkar's stuff, what is your best approach to studying for his stuff? Um, I think I know the answer. <laughs> he he basically told me today, do do not be cramming this stuff. You you have to understand it, or, or you are sinking your ship lighter. Very true. So. This this kind of goes back to why I sh had this, because if you look here at the bottom. Here, actually reading that you can do. Review slash study. That's why I have that section that's review slash study. Is that. A week or two, a week or two before the exam. I would put here. So like. If you, for example, if you wanted to use my material and stuff to um, my YouTube videos to study, what I would do is I would come and count. Let's see where I would come and I would count before exam one. There is one, two, three, four, five, six videos, four chapters, give or take. For um, for exam one, plus part one, part two, part three review videos. So what I would do is I would start probably a week and a half beforehand, and every day review one of these videos. So I would put into my schedule biochem. Um, chapter one, intro and in general recap info and that's going to be 51 minutes long and that i'm going to do on tuesday and then the next one wednesday thursday maybe thursday i have a little bit more time so i'm going to do two of those thursday and like that and i would stick with that sort of schedule with with this program you are taking a lot more credits than you've ever taken in the past uh, most undergraduate programs at maximum you're taking about 18 at the very max most people for a full load are 12 to 15 so you're literally almost doubling the amount of credits that you're taking so however much time you spent in undergrad you double need it. to you need to at minimum double the amount of time and because this is also graduate level coursework it has more difficulty added on to it. So at least 2.5 to three times as long is how much time you're going to need to spend 
to do as well as you did in undergrad. If you struggled in undergrad, then that's something you need to take into consideration and find, again, new ways and stuff that will help you study, help you prepare for material. So doing it this way, setting a goal like what you're going to do and not just watching these videos. Personally, what I would do is I would have the book open and my video and click play on the video. As you watch through the video, anytime you don't understand something and if I don't explain it, pause the video and Google. immediately if we don't understand something or don't know what a word means, where do we go? Google. To Google. I love Google. So we're talking something about acids, bases, and pH buffers. If I don't understand something here, so the acids are compounds that release protons. If I don't know what a compound is, immediately define compound biochem. If you look at my search history, I have defined 8 million different words because I'm trying to figure out everything that it means. So it's a compound is a substance made of molecules that contain two or more elements bonded together. If I remember correctly, at one point, that was an exam one test question. I don't know, it's been a while since I took the class, but I remember something similar to that was a test question at one point. So stuff like that, where anytime you don't know a word, throw it back, do it, and then try and, try and go through it. it it does take a long time and it can be extremely frustrating when you start out but i promise you guys if it's you especially it. especially now if you put the work in now and spend the time tries one tries two tries three and try four to do this when you get into the second half of the program it will be so much easier and you will absolutely feel so prepared for those heavy, heavier, like heavy level courses. When you comes time to take part one boards, you will feel so good about taking part one boards because it's just going to be a review of stuff that you already know. Elizabeth, did you have a question? No, I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so with that, I feel like we've gotten through enough of all of the advice, kind of the rough how to study, all that sort of good stuff. At this time, what would you guys like to cover? What would you like to talk about? What would you like to do with with this session? It's up to you guys. I talked okay. with him today about functional groups. Um, I'm still confused on not necessarily what they are or what they do, but how the test questions are going to be worded. Is he going to show us like a molecule and? No. So he won't have, Kristen, you could probably answer this question better than I can. Kind of what, what do you remember about questions? No images whatsoever. All straightforward questions. He doesn't really ask about individual molecules so much in the first, let's just say phase one that we're in right now. There's not a whole lot. Um, I technically could pull up my biochem from last trimester and see what I had from quiz questions because um, I can still look at it. But a lot of our quiz questions, even no images have ever appeared on anything I've taken of his in the so it's not so much um it's knowing what certain ones are like he was grilling me in our one-on-one -on, -one on monday on which groups which things belong to which i suck at but i'm getting better um it's a lot of like he told you cheryl write it down if you're not sure and you find an answer write it down so <clears throat> this is something that I discovered actually more recently. If any of you have used any kind of AI software or if you haven't used it, I highly recommend using it as a great way to study. So you'll, you'll need to play with it a little bit to kind of get what you want. But I would put in here, write me a 20 question multiple choice practice exam covering functional groups. 
So here now I have 20 questions about functional groups that I can practice with. So what is if we can go ahead and answer these together? We should be able to get it. And granted, this isn't foolproof, right? But the, this is a great start if you want to practice. So let's start running through these. Um, I'm going to do, can I do polls somehow? I think I did set it all up beforehand, but uh, we're going to do this. Have you ever, have you ever used true? MonGraph? I have not. Okay. So many, so many of these things. There's a couple of things. So many of these things have um, have come out more recently since like even like before they've come out after I started the program. So okay. I think there's Minecraft one. There's another one that's called. Well, it takes can... questions too. So if you had used it, I was going to have you compare them since I've already purchased that. Um, let me see. There's another. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Study, okay. study fetch is another one Never that's come out more thing. recently. So it's an AI tutor. Um, I don't know if you have to pay for it. I think that there's a free version. But and that one will also like you can set up your computer to listen and it'll bullet point and break down notes and stuff for you as something goes on. So. so yeah, study fetch. This is what it. Oh, let's see if I can. Down. 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 I don't know if y'all can, if my camera will focus on that, if you can see it or not. Maybe not, but study, study fetch, that's one. Another one that I, I haven't tried it out personally, but everything that I've seen about it looks really, really promising. So. Again, like I said, find what works for you. Any way that you can find questions, looking up Quizlets as well. So like what I would do is I would actually some of the quiz questions that you get each week. You can take those quiz questions, put them into Google and type Quizlet after them, and it'll pull up Quizlets from other places, from like other schools, because Dr. Sarkar, a good chunk of his questions do also come from like back of the book quest questions from other textbooks and stuff. So they are a lot of his questions are out there. It's just kind of if you find a whole bunch of different quizlets that contain practice biochemistry questions, yep. you should you should find similar questions and then you can kind of practice with those <laughs> and go through kind of the, the rule of thumb. I have two rules of thumb. First and foremost, if you happen to stumble upon or find some kind of quiz that or some kind of material that is exactly what you end up seeing on an exam, do not share it. Do not talk about it. Do not continue to use that. Because the, if somebody finds if, if it happens by once and it's an accident and you using it to study and you find it, that's one thing. If you continue to search those specific things out and you find them and you share them, all that sort of stuff, you will be the one who gets kicked out of the program as well as every single person that you shared it with. So please do not get kicked out of the program. It is not fun. It is a lot of wasted money. OK, hopefully that was clear enough. <clears throat> OK, continuing. Let's go ahead and see if we can answer some of these. So what I'm going to do is these are going to be a little bit. We're going to do this kind of quick. I'm going to do about. I'll do a little timer. We're just going to do. Like a 15 second timer. After 15 seconds, anybody can jump in and say what they think the answer is. We're going to do a shorter timer. 
on realistically in the in the test, you, you'll have a minute, a, roughly a minute to answer each question. OK, so this first one, so I'm going to read the question and start the timer. So what is a functional group? A group of friends who study chemistry together, a specific arrangement of atoms in a compound responsible for its chemical properties, a type of chemical reaction, or a group of isotopes. This one, hopefully, because we already kind of covered, everybody should should recognize this. So we'll stop this one a little early. What's our what's our answer for it? B. B. Perfect. Moving on. Which functional group is present in alcohols? Carbonyl, hydroxyl, amine, or an ether? Well, maybe we'll do like 10 seconds. Maybe less will do. Yeah, we'll do 10 seconds. I think I heard it. What one did this be? Christina, I think you said it. I think it. it's car. I want to say carboxyl, I think. So let's go through it. So this is where we're not sure. This is the fantastic option where what we want to do is use all of our answer choices to learn. OK, so specifically we're looking at alcohols. So if we look up. Define alcohol. Alcohol. Um, Biochemistry. So is alcohol, hydroxyl. any of a class of organic compounds characterized by one or more hydroxyl OH groups attached to a carbon <laughs> atom of an alkyl group, a hydrocarbon chain. So now this we're getting a couple different words in here that are new for us. And we could even copy paste. This. I personally, I'm a little bit old school. I love PowerPoints and I love Word documents because I've worked with them so much. I'm, I feel very, like I know a lot of the tricks and stuff to edit them and to quickly like make them look the way that I want them to. Again, find what works best for you. Say I'm old school and use Word, it's weird. I'm very old school then, Drake. Come on. My computer kind of crapped the bed not too long ago and I had to fully reset it. Let's see if I can get this to paste nicer. There we go. Here we have all of our questions. Okay. We know that the answer for a hydroxyl And this is literally what I will sit and do after I take each quiz. This is kind of what I will sit and do. Um, again, you're not technically supposed to save quiz questions, but anytime that you're able to view them, or especially after the fact, um, after they've been released, you should be able to see the wrong answer choices as well, hopefully. Or if you create other questions like this, whatever you got to do. So hydroxyl, we know that a hydroxyl is the correct answer. Bam, put that there. So now we look at a carbonyl. Can anybody explain to me what a carbonyl is? I wouldn't expect all of you to, so don't worry. So our carbonyl, for organic chemistry, a carbonyl group is a functional group with the formula C double bond is O composed of a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom. So it's a functional group composed of a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom. And then we continue here. The simplest carbonyl groups are aldehydes and ketones, usually attached to other carbon compound. So this is where we want to start getting kind of word recognition. So in the future, if we see carbonyl, we want to think aldehydes and ketones, and this is now where the, the, the Google train kind of takes us down a little bit of a rabbit hole. So what is an aldehyde and what is a ketone? Fine aldehyde biochem. 
So an aldehyde is any of a class of organic compounds, organic meaning carbon, it's going to have carbon in it, in which a carbon atom shares a double bond with an oxygen atom, a single bond with a hydrogen atom, and a single bond with another atom or group of atoms. And we can even look at images. Go get a basic general understanding of what an aldehyde is. And then we look at, if I remember correctly, when I took the course and still, Dr. Sarkar loves to ask questions about aldehydes and ketones. He still does. Oh yeah, loves aldehydes, loves ketones. Define ketone biochem. So it's a specific elemental structure in organic chemistry, consists of a single bond to two CH3 or R groups with a double bond to an oxygen molecule. So if we see double bond to an oxygen molecule, there is our C to double bond O. So certain other stuff contain a ketone group. And this is kind of where it use your best judgment to say, OK, how far down the <laughs> rabbit hole, do, how far down the rabbit hole do I go? We start getting to some big names and stuff like this. My general rule of thumb is if you have never seen those words before, after reading a free kind of watching the lecture and reading through a chapter and then you've never don't recognize the word at all, that's probably a good stop sign. You can kind of stop there and don't keep going down any further. OK. So we had carbonyl. We know that they're aldehydes ketones. We get rough little bit of idea kind of what an aldehyde, what a ketone is. Usually I'd kind of put some of this in here as well. So now we have an amine. What is an amine? I'm gonna hide that so you can't cheat. Or is there anything amine? Is there anything that you've heard that sounds similar to amine? Amino, amino acid. Acids. Yep. Amino acid. So we think if they're called amino acids, more than likely they probably have an amine group and they're probably often in acids. Of some form you think so some form of them will are gonna be acidic. Or acid, if we know the definition of an acid, we know that acids are what we call, they're hydrogen donors, meaning that they give off hydrogens, they give away hydrogens. So amines are organic compounds that contain nitrogen atoms with a lone pair. They're derived from ammonia, NH3, in which one or more hydrogen atoms is replaced by an alkyl or an aryl group. So amine, we'll typically see it as an NH2. So it's organic compound that contains nitrogen with a lone pair. So on. So, and then finally we get down to an ether and so on and so forth. We keep doing this. So, because the, re the reason why, why do you think it's important? Why do we do this? What's the purpose of of doing all of this with when half of the or all of these aren't even the correct answer for this question? Because another question could be asked, just reworded like similar question, but reworded where one of those is what he's asking about instead of. The alcohol or whatever. Exactly, and that's how a lot of his questions are going to come across. You can read through some of the times you'll take his test. And you'll read a question and it seems like it's the exact same question, but like one or two little things are changed and it's a completely new question. Or he'll give you the answer choices and he's taken out one of the like what would have been like the most correct answer choice and you have to look at it and be like, oh, well, this is also like this answer is, is potentially correct as well. And you go with that one. So now we know that we have alcohols or hydroxyls, aldehydes and ketones or carbonyl. Carbonyls are C double bond O. Amino acids are our amine groups. And then we continue that with ether and so on for all of these different things. So the functional group responsible for the acidic properties of carboxylic acids. First, again, with this question, we started here. So acidic properties, we said an acid. What does an acid do? What is an acid's main job? To give hydrogen. To give it's a hydrogen donor. Carboxylic acids. Hey, that's a new word. We haven't really seen that. Define carboxylic acids biochem. A carboxylic acid is an organic acid that contains a carboxyl group. C double bond O. 
and it's attached to an R group. Does everybody understand what R group means? What an R group is? No, not at all. Okay. Let me. R, R group is like saying there's something else there. We don't really care what it is. So, like an amino acid structure. So, for example, amino acids. R group stands, it's a side chain. So, with an amino acid, we have an amino group, a hydrogen, a carboxyl group, and there's something else here. Like there's a bunch of, this could be 30 carbons long, this could be two carbons long, this could be one carbon long, this could have like two pretty little ring structures down here, or whatever. It's just like, it's kind of like in, in math, you use an X as a representation. That's what R means. R is saying that there's something else here, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. But for right now, we're just going to say it's an R group, we're not going to care a whole lot what it, what's actually there. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, it's our placeholder. Does that make sense to everybody else? Is there anybody else that's still confused on that? Because if anybody is, I want to make sure that we nip this now so that it's not confusing later. Crystal clear for me. Okay. As my grandfather says, clear as mud in a rainstorm. <laughs> So we had read here the function group responsible for the acidic properties of carboxylic acid is we had read already with the carboxylic acid it contains a carboxyl group and actually that we need to read the question carefully because it's talking about the acidic properties acidic properties referring to it being a proton so let's actually look back the answer because I almost put carboxyl, but I don't think that that's going to be right. And I could be wrong because I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. The answer is carboxyl. OK. And this this is where then again, the next kind of question in my brain is, is carboxyl acidic or basic? Carbox containing a carboxyl group, a C double bond OH. That's why I was getting carboxyl mixed up with carbonyl. Easy to do. This is C double OH. It has the oxygen or the hydrogen right there, so it can donate the hydrogen, which is why it is acidic. Okay. Is anybody sick of doing this already? My brain already hurts. Yep. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, this is really painful to do in the beginning, but the more that you do it, the more often, and honestly, you might need to do and define and Google the exact same word five, six, seven, eight times. They say, according to, to the research, you have to experience something in some way 17 times before it is restored in long term memory. OK, so that means you have to see each of the functional groups in several different ways, at least 17 different times in order for it to be stored to go from short term to an actual long term understanding memory. OK. But now uh, we're here hydroxyl. Who can tell me what a hydroxyl group is? Come on, guys, I believe in you. We did this, we, we did hydroxyl already. Think hard. OH. So it's OH. But remember what hydroxyl, what type of substance hydroxyls correlate with? Aldehydes. Alcohol. It was alcohol good? Alcohols. What was with ketones or aldehydes? Do you remember, Christine? Hydroxyls were with alcohol. Alcohols. Carbonyls. Carbonyls were aldehydes and alcohols. Or aldehydes and ketones. 
Aldehydes, good. What was our structure for carbonyl? C double bonded to O. C double bond O, beautiful. Amino. Now amino, here's something interesting. We have amino and we have amine. What's the difference? I don't know. Where do we go? Google. Almighty Google. You will get so sick of Google, I promise. So literally, what is the difference between amine and amino? Amino is a subcategory of amine. Amine is any group that contains nitrogen with a lone pair. Amino group is specifically nitrogen with a lone pair and at least two hydrogens bonded to it. So we even have a little picture. Amino group R, what does R stand for? Something bigger. <laughs> yeah, it's our side chain. Something bigger all over there that we don't give a crap about right now at this moment. So amino group has at least an NH2. Amine is any group that contains nitrogen with a lone pair. So an amine, actually we can go up here and we can correct. Amine would be something like anything that has a nitrogen and a lone pair. Amino is our NH2. More than likely, they're going to be related because we have amino acids and amine. They look incredibly similar. And if there's two little lone pairs here, you could very easily stick two hydrogens onto there for the amine to become an amino. So we know they're going to be related, but there's a slight difference. Amine is two. So nitrogen atom with a lone pair. Amino is an NH2. Sweet. Next question. In which of the following functional groups is a carbon double bond to an oxygen? We should know this right away. Let's go ahead and shout out what's our answer. Carbonyl. Carbonyl. A carbonyl. Sweet. So see how doing all of this beforehand, it wasn't a waste of time. It made us actually know what comes after. Now we get into new words. Alkene and alkyne. Now we, we saw the word alkyne at some point. Does anybody remember where we saw the word alkyne? Was it in relation to the hydroxyl group? It was. So when we had it, I think it was alkyne. Oh, alkyl group. Are they the same? I don't know. Let's Google it. That's what I would have thought. Like, this is one thing with biochemistry. You just keep on going and going and going. So let's see. Define alkene. Biochem. So alkenes are a class of hydrocarbons containing only carbon and hydrogen. So a hydrocarbon is an atom that contains only or a molecule that contains only carbon and hydrogen. Unsaturated compounds with at least one carbon to carbon double bond. Let's keep going. A chemical compound made of only carbon hydrogen atoms containing at least one carbon to carbon double bond. This is an alkene. If we want to look at pictures, oftentimes he'll also have, if you go to his book, that's why it's really good to use his book as a base. Um, he'll have in here a lot of these different examples. We should be able to find somewhere in here a picture that he uses. Carbonyl mm -hmm. is an aldehyde. Um, I says, well, if I can't find one right off the bat. So this, this is a good example of kind of putting all this, all this together. So see how this is one massive molecule. And each of these different parts inside of it are different functional groups, which all join together to give the whole thing its overall properties. A lot of what we're going to look at in this course is just going to be like 
the, the individuals and what the individual um, functional groups are responsible for and what the individual functional groups, like what uh, attributes or what properties those individual functional groups would give to a molecule. Not so much, we're not going to like look at something like this and like, what's the overall charge or something like that? That's not going to be <clears> what we're going to do. That would be way above our pay grade. Yeah, I know it might be a little bit later that you really get into owl K, uh, al aldehydes and and all that sort of stuff. I think it's a couple chapters down, but at some point, like when you do get to it, you have a little bit of an idea. If you do see it, you can come back to it, add pictures, all that kind of stuff. And stuff like this, like this, these practice questions, this is literally what I would turn into a study guide where you can, and when you do your study guides, you work on building a study guide for the exams, you can come back and look at these questions and try and pull from the uh, this um, and see like what you can answer using all this information. OK, so now we have an alkyne. I spelled it wrong, but it fixed it for me. So an, al an unsaturated hydro hydrocarbon containing at least one carbon carbon triple bond. So now this one has a triple bond. And we'll get into some of these later on. Where like alkenes, alkyne, aldehydes, like they break down and become each other and then they reverse and become other things. And we'll talk about oxidation reduction reactions and all that sort of good stuff. Um, have you guys talked about any of that yet? You know, have you guys talked about? No. Okay, not yet. Okay, then we'll leave it alone. We won't get into it yet. Okay. Um, then Esther, Esther Bonds, he loves to ask questions. Dr. Sarkar likes to ask questions about Esther Bonds. So yes, he does. Esther, functional group. Define biochem. I have, I have found that putting a general topic like biochem or like biology or those kind of anatomy, those kind of keywords help to get more clear and a little bit more concise definitions to stuff. So I'd recommend doing that. So esters are a functional group, commonly encountered in organic, inorganic chemistry. They are characterized by a carbon bound to three other atoms, a single bond to a carbon, a double bond to an oxygen, and a single bond to an oxygen. So it's the, an ester is going to be a carbon, single bonded to a carbon, and then two oxygen. So we'll see something most likely be written like C2O2, C2O2, something like that is ester. And you will talk about something called ester bonds. Um, here, the, this is where the singly, singly bound oxygen is bound to another carbon in ester bonds. You'll get into ester bonds later on. Those are really, really important for like um, formation of, of lipids and, and that sort of stuff. OK, functional group found in amines is what? Amino. The amino. We already talked about ether. Right, we, we talked about ether, didn't we? We kind of skipped it up here as well. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna go go through the rest of the questions. You guys get the idea of kind of what what you what you can do. Aldehydes and ketones. We talked about both of those. What is the functional group that is that is in found inside of aldehyde and ketones? Carbon. Hydro yeah. The carbonyls. Yes. Hydro hydroxyls are found in what? Alcohol. 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 Hydroxyls are found in alcohol. Carbonyls are found in aldehydes and ketones. What functional group is found inside of carboxylic acid? Carboxyls. Carboxyl. What's the difference between a carbonyl and a carboxyl? 
Carboxyl is acidic. Carboxyl is acidic. Why is it acidic? What is different about its structure or the atoms that make it up that makes it acidic? It has a hydrogen. Good. It has a second oxygen and a hydrogen. So carboxyl is C double O H, and a carbonyl is just C double bond O. So just a C O. Sweet. Um, besides carboxyl, what is another functional group that we've talked about that is that would be acidic? Amines. Amines. What's another one? There's one more that we've talked about. What else has a hydrogen? Hydroxyl. Good, the hydroxyl, the alcohols. Perfect. So you can kind of see, rather than just straight memorizing every single functional group and what the properties are in like using flashcards, whatever, let's understand the actual chemical properties of it. So if it has hydrogens and it's willing to give up those hydrogens, more than likely, it's going to fit into our acidic box because an acid is a hydrogen donor. So if we look at something maybe like an amine, an amine is an am amine, so aminos are acidic. Would an amine be acidic or basic? Basic because it doesn't have the hydrogen. Because it doesn't have hydrogens. And acidic donates hydrogen, so it's hydrogen donor. A basic or a base is a hydrogen acceptor or a hydrogen receiver. So because it has these two lone pair, this has this lone pair right here, it's willing and able to accept hydrogens onto it. So does that kind of start to starting to break it down like that? Does that sort of make sense? Yes. Sweet. I'm Getting sure. into <laughs> Yeah. And that that's kind of what you guys want to start to do on your own start to make these connections not it's not just raw memorization it's let's understand what each of these things do and why it is that they're doing that what are the what are they made of and what are those how do those chemical properties typically react if it has hydrogen in it and it's more likely to donate hydrogen if it wants to get rid of its hydrogen then most likely it's going to be an acid. It's going to be an acidic. If it's free to accept hydrogen, has extra space for hydrogen, then it's going to be more basic. And then we have a couple of other different types. Um, let me actually pull up. Um, let me see if I have. Functional groups in this as well. I don't. OK, functional groups aren't huge on boards. It's more the amino acids and we're talking about amino acids. We'll get more into that. OK. Moving on, thiol, which of the following, which of the which functional group contains a sulfur atom bonded to a hydrogen atom? We have a thiol, a sulfide, a disulfide and a sulfoxide. Tell you right now of all of these, I know for sure a thiol and disulfide are in the book. Not sure if a sulfox sulfoxide and a sulfide um, are in there. But again, if you watch the lecture and you don't recognize any of these, well, let's start with with thiol. Define thiol. They are organosulfur compounds that contain carbon bonded sulfhydryl, also called sulfonyl groups. I don't like that definition because it has more words that I don't understand. So I look for another definition. So they are the sulfur analog of alcohols. So we know an alcohol is an OH. So it's sulfur takes the place of oxygen in the hydroxyl group of an alcohol. And the word is a blend of thio with alcohol, thiol with a blue highlighted sulfide group. There Beautiful. I found the people also ask if it if this top one doesn't make sense. The people also ask is a great place to look. These tend to have a little bit more clear definitions. 
So we look at our definition, which function group contains a sulfur atom bonded to a hydrogen atom. Bam. I all. Do we stop there, though? Nope. Nope. And now we all know why Drake sessions are three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> this, like, so this is what I say when I tell people. So there's there's a misconception. There are certain people that are naturally gifted with a photographic memory. I don't know, Kristen. You may have heard of Anna. Do you know who Anna is? I have. Okay. Anna was a student. She is, was tutored physiology one for like three years. She's actually now starting off. She's working at Parker as a lab helper kind of person, whatever that's called, like a lab assistant. Um, and her goal within the next couple of years is to become a professor at Parker. She has a photographic memory. So like she can read certain read a lot of this stuff once and she'll immediately have it. I do not have a photographic memory. This is how I've learned through the entire program. And so I promise you, if I can do it, and this is my humble brag, I have maintained a 4.0 GPA through the entire program. I'm currently a try nine. So if I can do it, I promise you, you I'm not gonna recommend that every single person of you, every single one of you tries to maintain a 4.0 GPA because it it takes a serious strain on your life and it's very it's not easy to do but what I'm telling you is if you follow this sort of method and it's going to be painful at first it's going to be painful I promise you it's painful it but is the, the more that you do it you get quicker at it the more you start to recognize words and it becomes much much easier and rather than having to do this with every single word because in in the next chapters you're going to see repeats of all of these words. So as you continue with each each chapter through, not just in this class, but in all of your classes, you'll have to do this less and less and less and less. And then you'll start new classes next trimester. And then again, you'll be having to do this again at a lot at the beginning. And then you'll have to do it less and less and less and less because you already you build a really strong foundation understanding what the words are and what they mean. Um, actually, jumping back one really quick second. So thiols, if we look at a thiol, so it takes the place of an oxygen and the hyd with the hydroxyl. It takes the place of the oxygen in the hydroxyl. Thiol, are we immediately going to assume, is a thiol going to be acidic or basic? Acidic. Yep, we always just double check and confirm. Thiols are weak acids. There's a new terminology which I think you guys, you guys talked already about acids and bases, correct? Somewhat. Somewhat. It was pretty much in the review stuff for week one. Okay. Um, acids, I'll cover this really quick. Acids and bases. So we have strong and we have weak, right? Can anybody, does anybody recall what the difference between calling a strong or a weak acid or base? Okay, so a weak means that it's only going to it's partially or weakly. Um, let's start with acids. So strong acid, weak acid. So partially or weakly dissolves, giving off some hydrogen. That is a weak acid. Okay, so it gives off some hydrogen, not all of them break down. It likes to hold on to its hydrogen a little bit longer, a little bit more, so it's not going to rate. It's not going to release all of its hydrogen right away. A strong acid complete, completely dissolves, releasing all of its hydrogen. Big change in pH. Smaller change in pH. Does that make sense? Yes. Or not so much. Okay. Now we think <coughs> acids, right? They donate hydrogen. What's the job of a base? 
receive hydrogen? Yep. So acids are our acids equals our proton proton donors. Base is our proton acceptors. So a strong base. What do we think a strong base is going to do? Is it going to accept all of the hydrogen really quickly and aggressively and hold on to it? Or is it going to like kind of half-assed? Like, I guess I'll hold up a proton. And take all of it. Except, yep. Grabs all the hydrogen. All of it. Weak base. Meh. Kind of lazy. Get some of it. Kind of slow. So then if we look at this, pH, pH is a measure of how much hydrogen there is inside of a solution. Solution being typically water with a bunch of stuff mixed into it. Again, these are all words. Like if you don't know if, what a solution is, again, define solution. Go and Google because you'll see in the first couple of pages of stuff, all of these this kind of terminology. So the st strong base, would it have a large change in pH or a small change in pH? Large. Another way of thinking about this, how much strong base would you need in order to change the pH? Would you need a lot of strong base or a little of it? would a say little. a little yeah yeah you only need a little bit of it what about a weak base if i want to change the ph let's say if i want to change the ph by by two points go from like seven to nine would i need more weak base compared to strong base or would i need less weak base compared to strong base more weak you need more weak base because it's not going to change the ph as much sweet concepts and we'll we'll come back. You'll come back to acids and stuff um, a little bit more. Okay, we talk sulfide, disulfide. Uh, we won't look this up now, but you will see something called disulfide bonds. Linkage. Yeah, disulfide bonds or disulfide linkage. I got grilled on that one on my one on one the other day with him. So. It will be. I promise you that too. Just gonna. Hopefully that's enough. Exclamation points. Okay. I don't know if it's the first exam, but when you when you see it talked about in the book in his lectures, yep. uh, he talks more about it. It's with um, amino acids. Exam and, one. Yep. So I think it's chapter four of this, amino acids. We're doing this week, right? Yeah, y'all. Mm. What'd you say? Is amino acids what we're doing this week? I believe so. Okay. It is amino acids. Ah, I hit X. No, I didn't. Oh, Good. No. Amino acids is chapter two. Look, I have a 43 minute video about it. Right here. Look, it's the whole freaking chapter. W Drake. Oh, so beautiful. And you can see this is when I have my man bun. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, I had a man bun. Yes, you my, did. My, my wife hated it, but I rocked it for a while. You can go through, see all my different ch changes in hair. I had a man bun, and then I cut it short, and then I shaved my face. And, yeah, it's You're it's been really a wild awesome. ride. It's been a wild ride. Okay, yeah, so you literally go through this whole entire thing. Hey, if you want to throw this into, look, I do all of our beautiful definitions all sorts of stuff. Um, Do you want me to throw the link in group me? Sure. I think that's the one I already threw in there earlier. Probably. Yeah, but literally, so on this, like, I'll go through some of his PowerPoints again, like key focus stuff, go through the whole book. I'm highlighting, I'm adding a bunch of material, all sorts of good stuff. 
all this i'll point out like hey this is this kind of stuff that he'll typically ask quiz, quiz questions or exam questions about from what i remember it's been like i said it's been a while since taking the class but i'm pretty sure he's used like the same pool of questions for the past like 12, 12 years, years. <laughs> so yeah. like in the background, I'm going through and editing the questions for the amino acids in chapter one from the book to send to you. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. The functional group present in aldehydes is what? This one is a little bit tricky. I, I feel like this is kind of a bad question. It I is. personally personally wouldn't pick. And that's the one thing with chat GTP is you or is any of the um, with any of the AI stuff? They'll might throw in some bad questions. <clears throat> what would what do we know? What is the functional group that's present in aldehydes? Carboxyls. Is it carboxyls? Carbonyl. Carbonyl. Carbonyls. Good pronunciation is key. Carbonyls. What's the structure of a carbonyl? C double bonded O. Perfect. How is it different from a carboxyl? Doesn't have a type. What's what's the what's the makeup of carboxyl? Taylor's right. Taylor, um, it does have a hydrogen. What's its full what's its full chemical structure? C O O H. Perfect. C O O H. Carbonyls are they basic or are they acidic? Basic. Take some basic bitches. Carboxyl. <laughs> uh, acidic. 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 Beautiful. See, y'all are learning. Isn't this fun? Actually, it is. Nine, <laughs> this nine, is way 30. more fun than listening to the lecture. Night. Let's go. <laughs> Stoked to be here. Um, <laughs> woo. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How blah, much blah. coffee have you had, Drake? Uh, I don't drink coffee. I did have an energy drink today, which I shouldn't have. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, which functional group is commonly found in proteins? Ooh, I know that one. Which one, guys? Amino. Amino. Good. Amino. We have a couple. What, uh, look, we have our favorite word here, carboxyl. What's our carboxyl makeup? D-O-O-H. What's our amino makeup? No, no. In... Uh, single NH3? or NH three or NH two? You'll see okay. it as both. Yeah. Oh, I did remember. Honestly, it. crap. Technically, technically, NH three is ammonia. Technically, sorry, <laughs> my voice telling me to be cool, quiet. When I have my headphones on, I can't hear my the the sound of my own voice, so it's a little, I get a little excited. Um, technically, NH three is ammonia, but also you'll see it amino written as NH3 or NH2. What's the other one similar to this? Amine. Mean. What is an amine? N colon. I don't remember what you said. <laughs> N with a um, a free pair of electrons. Free pair. OK. OK, so N, N colon. The colon, the dots are going to be a free pair of electrons. Sulfhydryl. We, we've heard this word before, kind of, or words similar to it. What other amino acid did we see that had a sulfur plus a hydrogen? Is that sulfur? Thiol. Oh. Thiol, good. Thiol. Um, and this is similar to what other functional group? To what other functional group? Hydroxyl. Hydroxyls are seen in what chemicals? Alcohols. Are alcohols sweet? Alcohols then are do they typically are they typically acidic or are they basic? Acidic. Nice. Thiols are they acidic or are they basic? Acidic. Beautiful. Learning knowledge. 
the functional group that contains a nitrogen atom bounded to two hydrogen atoms is called. So typically, two hydrogen atoms, what would we think it is a nitrogen with two hydrogen atoms? What would we call it? Amide. Does it have? Yep, amide. What's, and then we also have the amino. So this is another thing that you guys will see. Um, and I cover this a lot in all of my YouTube videos. The There's a ton of AKAs for stuff. A lot of the words they're going to be use a bunch of different words, especially when you get to like triglycerides where they have like triglycerides, triglycerols, triglycic acid, something or other. And the same thing here, amide, aminos, like all this sort of stuff, very similar sounding words. And a lot of times they're just AKAs of stuff. So we difference between amide and amino. So amine is an ammonia derivative in which one or more hydrogen atoms are replaced by an alkyl group, while amide is an amine derivative of carboxylic acid. I don't love that definition. It's a little bit confusing still. Car compounds that have a nitrogen atom bonded to one side. Here we go. So compounds that have a nitrogen atom bounded to one side of a carbonyl group are classified as amides. So let's look up amides. I and mean, there should be an example of this in the book, actually, somewhere. Do, 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 do. This is why like, it's easier with the videos to give you follow the book. So amino, am, amido, I think it's supposed to be their amide. See, there's our C, C double bond O. There's our amino. C double bond O and our amino, there's our amide right there. Biome. So it's a little bit easier if you if you straight follow the book and my videos, it'll get you through all of this kind of step by step. Um, nitrile and amine and I mean, we don't ever really talk about those from what I can remember. Ethers, ethers contain which functional group? Some of these questions are going to be a little bit stupid, but Gee, ether. ethers probably contain ether. Ether. Had to guess. Yeah. Which which functional group is present in esters? Probably ester. Yeah. Some of these, it gets, like I said, AI isn't going to do the best job every single time, but more questions that you can see and you can get is great. Which functional group is found in organic acids? So going through these, first of all, acids. We know that an acid is what? Carboxyl. Carboxyl is one of our choices. Why, why do you think carboxyl? Don't know. Based on what we've read and done tonight, it's carboxyl in my brain. <laughs> So carbonyl, for example, what's the chemical makeup of carbonyl? C, C double bond O. Good. We've done that one about eight or nine times, only like eight or nine more for you guys to have it in permanent memory. So <laughs> carbonyl, this is basic. The alkenes. Alkenes are weak bases. What does a weak base mean? It accepts hydrogen. So it Weakly. It, yeah. So it doesn't accept a ton of hydrogen. It does it like, yeah, I guess fine, I'll take it. Ethers. Basic. Uh, so alcohols are weak acidic. Ethers do not have an acidic hydrogen atom. That can be noted to a base. So these are also basic, which leaves carboxyl. Which what's the structure of a carboxyl? The OOH. OOH. That being acidic, it's the only one that's acidic, so it has to be our answer choice. Um, 
what other questions can I ask here? Um, what is the name of the functional group which contains a carbonyl and an amino group? Carbonyl plus amino equals what? <coughs> what are three? So we have amines, aminos, and amides. What's an amine? Who is, who is our colon guy? Oh. So, mean we have and nitrogen. So all of them have all of them are nitrogen, right? Base. Amine has the N double bond. Amino is our NH2 or NH3. The amide is our NH2 plus our C double bond O. Okay, so our amides, carbonyl plus amino equals an amide. <coughs> okay. I will come back at some point. It's a functional group that contains a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. What is that? Carbonyl. Carbon carbonyl and a nitrogen atom. My guess is this is actually probably going to be one that we don't talk about. Yep. Yeah. If you're taking the test, because we don't talk about this, we don't talk about these guys. <clears throat> so part of, the, part of the test taking process as well is going to be kind of ruling out kind of the BS kind of stuff. <coughs> Looking at the answer choices. And I'll say with Dr. Sarkar's test, if you know the material well, a majority of the questions you can fairly quickly, if you understand what the question is asking, you can fairly quickly knock down the answer choices to kind of a 50-50 shot of them. Okay. And the rule he says is always go with your gut instinct. Don't change your answers ever. <laughs> Unless you absolutely know that you're wrong. Yes. Okay. And the don't use your pinky on the down arrow, ever. <laughs> the functional group present in ketones is? Alcohol. Carbonyl. Oh, alcohol. Our carbonyls. The carbonyls is correct. Remember alcohols. Alcohol is not a functional group. What is the functional group that's inside of alcohol? Hydroxyl. Hydroxyl. Sweet. Uh, this one, the function group responsible for sweet smell of fruits, ketones. That's just kind of random fact. That's why um, diabetics, if you're in ketoacidosis, your breath will smell fruity. If you've ever watched the amazing Dr. Pole, the veterinarian, cows a lot of times will go into ketosis if their GI tract isn't working right, and you'll, their breath will smell sweet. That's due to the ketones of ketoacidosis inside of the body. Um, your body creates ketones when it's unable to create glucose, when it's out and unable to process or have glucose. The keto diet uses ketones. It pu pushes your forces your body into ketoacidosis to then which are created from fats. Which functional group is commonly found in DNA and RNA? Uh, this one, I'm pretty sure it's phosphate. We haven't gotten to that part yet. That yet, so that will be a question that we'll answer later. Carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen atom is called. I think this one is an azide, which I don't think we talk about. Uh, nope. Might be the one of the nitros. A nitrile is a carbon to bond. 
we you might mention nitrals. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Functional group present in acyl chlorides. That one we probably yeah, I don't recognize that, so probably not super important. Uh, functional group found in halocarbons. Um, halocarbons are just any is a structure that has hydrogen and carbons. Um, most likely we see are like our alkenes, alkynes are going to be that kind of stuff. I think alke I think alkene, but again that one's not off the top of my head. Not super important. So, yeah. How does everybody feel? Do you feel a little bit better now than you did beginning this this day? I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel worse, and I'm questioning my life choices currently. <laughs> <clears throat> That's completely normal, Liz. So, Liz, w with with all of this, a lot of times you can feel like that. Um, when there's just a ton of information. The best thing to do when it comes to that is really to, you, you kind of need to sit down and really put your shoulder to the grindstone and just work through as much as you can in order to, to find the way that your brain processes and learns this information. If that is writing out every single functional group, 30 plus times and like what they are, then you, you need to do that. At this point in grad in the graduate program, the hand holding of any previous schooling is gone. This program is very much going to put to the test um, if you're able to manage yourself, manage your time and push yourself to finish, to, like, to get through the material, even when it's very, very difficult. And I'm going to be, I'll be completely honest with you guys. They're really, they're, there's never enough time in the week to get through all of it. So kind of what we say as you get more and more through the program is that you kind of have to, you have to really learn how to prioritize for yourself in order to get through the classes. So sometimes that prioritization means that it can mean that you don't do certain reading assignments or that you find a, there are certain if there are certain classes that are a little bit easier for you that you don't spend as much time in those classes or sometimes you increase those lecture videos to two times speed. And sometimes it literally just means chugging like drinking a red bull and powering through for 16 hours in one day sometimes that's what it requires last words kind of words of advice that i'll leave you guys with one prioritize sleep manage your time wisely and plan ahead i at some point or another, you will get caught cramming for a test. The more that you can push through and not cram and, and prepare more, like, so like right like to today, because y'all's first exam is either going to be week four or week five, week probably. Five. So it's week five. So you guys have, so, and probably more in the beginning of the week. So realistically, you have three weeks to prepare for your first exam. My philosophy and the way that I have tackled this entire program is spend the first, the in, spend the time before each first exam 100% focusing on school. Like the more you can like honestly, like, I hate to say this, but like the until, until you get your first exam, like low key kill your social life. Like spend the time on your classes, on school, on the program, creating a routine, 
Like if you have to sun up to sundown work on school, do what you have to do to absolutely crush your first round of exams. Because if you do really well in the beginning, the your first exam of each class will set you up for the rest of the class. If you do really well on the first exam, you don't have to climb out of a hole because trust me, ask people if anybody that's failed a class, <laughs> Christine, getting get getting to the very end and like, oh, I need a 96% on the final to pass the class is the worst feeling in the world. It's literally, but it's so much better to look at the end like, oh, I need a 46% to keep my letter grade or to pass the class. And that's extremely doable and much more like you can take a deep breath at that point and relax and be like, okay, I'm fine. That's not to say if you don't do well on the first exam, you can't climb out of that hole because there are many people who have done it. But just understand. It's extremely hard. It is extremely hard. Okay. That's just last kind of food for thought. And also, Liz, if you need more help and you feel still kind of lost, this is for everybody. There are now, luckily, I think there there are four Biochem 1 tutors, people that can, that can do sessions. I'm going to do a once a week kind of group live session like this. If you need more individualized type of attention, you can schedule, now that their schedules should be kind of coming out, you can schedule one-on-one time with those tutors. You can schedule some one-on-one time over Teams as well with the professor. Um, or if you're in person, you can go in person. Um, Parker has um, a contract with tutoring.com, which tutoring.com has professors from all over the place specifically for these subjects that you can access 24-7. Um, you can go and you can ask specific questions, ask about specific concepts, that sort of stuff, and meet with those those other outside professors to help understand these things. You have all of my YouTube videos as a resource. Um, just like I said, the, the first couple of weeks, you, you kind of figuring things out. And additionally, last very last thing that I'll say, if you do happen to fail a course, it's OK. It happens to a lot of people <laughs> and there are, are plenty of options for you. Don't feel like you have to get it on your first try because this is a very difficult program. This is this is a you're you're going to become a doctor. It's a doctorate program. You're going to become a doctor who knows how to diagnose and treat patients. So it's it's going to take time and it's going to take work. Christine, did you have a question or a comment? I just have one comment. At some point for some classes, it's about completion, not perfection. Oh yeah. If if you can get to perfection, that's awesome. If you just get to completion, get get to where you can. And also, guys, like one more the last thing that that was um one of the bouncing back to one of the things that was said. Talk to your classmates. This is not, it's not a competitive, like some of you aren't going to fail because others do well. All of you can do, if all of you pass and all of, if all of you get A's, then everybody will get an A. They might make the class harder for the next trimester, but who cares? You're already through the class. So <laughs> talk to each other, work with each other. If you can form, if you can find and form solid study groups. I know previous tries have did started doing like, nightly team meetings where everybody would hop on on teams at like six o'clock and they would like go through and do study sessions or do like watch lectures and stuff together so like it's it's hard being online uh, fully and not everybody being here so it's find find creative and think of creative ways to help yourself learn and and see what you can do um to include others and and bring everybody closer together and we kind of joke and say that this program is the perfect place to trauma bond. We're, we're all very, very much trauma bound together. So it is. Yeah. Even through being online, I've noticed that with last trimester, like we have our little group from my class that I'm still with for micro. And it's like, do you remember when you did this for this class? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yep, I remember the chats. I still have them all. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
any last minute questions, comments, concerns? <clears throat> Again, if you guys need anything, feel free to shoot me messages. Um, I am in clinic most days. If I'm not in clinic, I'm at home watching my son. So it might take me a little bit of a chunk of time to respond. Um, but I will always get back to you. If I don't, just shoot me a second message and, and I'll do my best to get back to you as, as quick as I can. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Are you going to share that document we did tonight or just is it just going to yeah, be saved in the? I can I can go ahead and share it. Let me file save as. Let me go to, I'm going to stop the recording right now because this is kind of a 